Previously, we covered how to create a digital elevation model for your fantasy world. This week, we'll be going over a method that is the easiest and requires the least amount of preparation, but is also the most tedious. Point-based elevation. While we're technically getting higher, this is definitely a small step down from the last installment on elevation, but we're still going to use the same joke. Can we get much higher? a softcore GIS nerd like me, you'll realize elevation is important, but only after you've made your entire map. While I would love to use digital elevation models and, you know, the proper projection, I'm too much of an idiot to be afforded that luxury, so we improvise. If you've made your own map in QGIS so far, that's excellent, and this will really help you out, especially if you're like me and you don't really know what you're doing. So like rivers, there's no strict definition of a mountain in terms of criteria, so we must create a system that will relay information on our map easily. I opted for a three-tiered approach to different classifications of height, those being hills, which are smaller than mounds, which are smaller than mountains. If you look at the legend, you can see the amount of each feature. Like I said, tedious as hell. The program is told to draw hills at, you know, less than a thousand feet, with mounds being classified in a one to four thousand foot bracket, and a mountain being any feature that's greater than 4,000 feet tall. There isn't really a cap to mountain height, so I picked one that was slightly shorter than our beloved Mount Everest to be my tallest mountain. There's a different symbol for each mountain, hill, and mound, so you can tell the approximate height of the feature just by looking at it. Um, this approach is twofold, so, you know, I'm no geologist, but some quick wikiing gave me a rough idea of the ways mountains can form. The polygon layer underneath the elevation markers displays the type of underlying geology that caused the elevation to form. This gives us a rough idea of what mountains would look like. The fold mountains are tall and rather jagged because it's two plates coming together, while the fault block mountains create steps and valleys because it's two plates coming apart. Little details, but, you know, that's what makes a good game. So, this takes form when you measure the distance between two points and divide by the elevation. This formula gives you an idea of how difficult the mountain is to climb. An example is, I usually add foothills as to approximate the gradient. You just measure up from the foothill point to the mountain's peak. Here we have an 820 foot hill leading up to an 11,350 foot peak. So we subtract 11,350 from 820 and we get 10,510. We divide this by the number of miles to the peak and get a ratio of feet per mile, or a gradient. Um, use this to dehydrate players, cost them days of traveling uphill, um, or make them roll for climbing the harsh cliffs and valleys that form as a result of the gradient. This is a system we use in real life too, so you can reference the actual grade percentage you want by simply looking through the world around you on the internet. The downsides are you don't get a beautiful 3D model and the tedious nature of placing points. You can grade a heat map if you want, but it's not great, and an overlay it doesn't translate well to 3D. Looks more like a histogram, actually, which makes me think it's not rendering the mountains to a level I would like. In any event, it's pretty much that. Keep the subs coming, guys. You reach 100, and that was a pretty important milestone for me. We're 10% of the way to 1,000, and that's when I can finally make money off this. So, throw me a bone, and leave a like if you feel inclined. As always, thanks for watching, Internet. This has been Lizard with the Gold Star World Builders Club. Out. Are you an advanced gamer? Are you sick of being a body shot thought? Then sub to my boy Sense Motive. If you like me, you'll love him.